Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Life Support. If you enjoy the content, we would ask that you like it, hit subscribe, and share it with your friends. Hey, it's so good to have you on Life Support. What we do on this program is we tell stories. We talk about how Jesus can step into even the worst of trauma and make himself known. And we're excited about the redemption of Christ. We're excited to have you with us. And I'm excited to have a guest with us that you may remember because uh, she's a great part of our family. Her name is Julie Hall. She is a therapist. She's got quite a story to tell. So good to have you here. Thank you. I love to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you drop by. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying um, when our son Taylor passed away, which is no secret to this audience, um, a woman walked up to me and she said, you know, Paul, after you lost your wife, I thought you were going to get a get out of jail free card. Never thought you would have to go through something like this. Mm-hmm. You are experiencing not having a get out of jail free card right now. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a painful story. I'm so thankful that you're willing to tell it. Give us a, a brief background of, of your life, what you've been through, and then what you're experiencing right now. And then I know some things we, we need to get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I want to preface it by saying, you know, I do believe that my story is part of the larger redemptive story that God is writing for each one of us. And I love how this program actually, you know, brings hope in our story. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the story for me starts, you know, over 20 years ago, my first husband. And those of you familiar with my story, I'll just, you know, encapsulate it for you. I was a young bride. I was in love with this man. He had a huge heart, huge smile. He was a man of God. I was living in this very protective bubble, and he was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of cancer, and 18 months later, he went home to be with Jesus. I was a young mom. I had an 11-year-old and two teenagers, a blended family, and, you know, for the very first time in my life, I knew what true despair felt like, and so... Fast forward, you know, nine years, I was a widow. Fast forward to my current situation, which I'll elaborate on a little bit more into the program, is God is once again asking me to be in that situation, to be in that wilderness season where um, I prayed for nine years for God to bring me a husband. You know, every New Year's Day, I would sit down with my coffee and my journal, and I would write down the goals for that year, my hopes, my dreams, and, you know, the hope and dream I had that God would bring me another husband. So years came and went, and God continued to say no. There was, you know, nothing happening in that part of my life. And a year and a half ago, God answered that prayer. That prayer was he did bring me a man. And, you know, as I talk to God, I have certain requirements I need him to do for me, (laughs) as we all do. And I said, Lord, there's only two things I really want in a husband. And I prayed this for all those years. I want him to love you more than anything. And I want him to love me and our kids second. That's it. You know, that's I don't care, you know, where he, you know, what he does for a living, where he comes from, his story, all those things where it's just those two things. So God did answer my prayer. He did give me that husband. And you know, that was a year and a half ago, three months into that marriage, my husband was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So it, meaning it had metastasized to his bones. So at that moment, once again, it's, I needed to, to really lament and wrestle and question God and say, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So when we refer to that, get out of, you know, jail free card, I really had a lot of soul searching, a lot of questions for God. Mm -hmm. What went through your mind as you were hearing those words that your husband has cancer or whoever it was delivered to you? Uh, That God is really not good. Mm -hmm. That, you know what, this is, I have waited this long and you gave me something to take it away. Wow, you are not good. Mm -hmm. You know, this doesn't look like you're good. And so to focus on that, it was devastating. And once again, it's another crisis in my faith. It's like, all right, all this time I have really believed this. And my testimony he's given me has glorified him. I've been doing his work. He's called me to do his work. So, you know, I mean, how could that be the result of me wanting to serve and honor God? Right. It doesn't compute. It doesn't. Logically. It really doesn't. Right. No. And if it did compute it, we'd be weird. Like, because we we are to live with hope. We are to live... um, 
hoping for good outcomes in our lives. Mm-hmm. We, we're not to walk around with a defeated attitude. No. And so we would expect God to be on that same wavelength. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's my self-made image of God is what I learned. I think he should behave a certain way. I yeah. think I was faithful to him for nine years. It doesn't work that way. It right. just doesn't. And so I think, okay, you know, I am three years older than the last time I was when I talked to you. And I, I looked back and integrated, like, the past story and my story now. And there's a lot of similarities. And guess what? The one similarity is he has not left me. And right. guess what else I learned? And I continue to learn life is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And that's the reality. Yeah. You know, I wish we could, um, as part of our every student ministry or every young family um, Bible study, should always have in it, your life is not going to play out the way you think. No. Just get used to that right now because <laughs> uh, I know you have we, – we, we want you to have hopes and dreams. That's great. It's mm-hmm. awesome. But – God gets to decide. Yes. Um, and again, you know, you had to kind of change your definition then of what was good, right? Absolutely. Yes, 100%. And, you know, focus on God's character, not on his, what he's going to provide for me. You know, it's like this verse, I've claimed this verse this year in 2023, and um, seek his face. I need to seek his face and not his hand, meaning... I need to look at the character of God to find the goodness of God. It's not the circumstances. It's not my circumstances. It's not my interpretation of, did he answer that prayer? Did he provide? Is he a good father? Is he a good provider? I really had to look at the word and go to the truth. Yes, and I have to believe that, even if it doesn't look like it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even if I can't feel it, even if I can't understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, those are the things that I've learned that I have to keep pressing upon my heart, and it's not easy, and I'm not really good at it. Yeah. Well, we get accused of, of using God as a crutch when we talk like this. Mm-hmm. So how would you answer someone who said, well, you know what, you're just making this up. You know, we could all say anything we want about God, mm-hmm. and he's obviously not being fair to you. Mm-hmm. So why do you keep talking like this? Mm-hmm. You know, our my hope and my joy is not contingent on my circumstances. It's really not. Again, I have to go back to the word and I have to like, you know, really seek the truth right. in his word. And I have to believe, you know, that has to guide my behavior. That has to that has to fill in, you know, it's it's like the prayers I had right when, you know, my husband got diagnosed. It's like, all right, you have to do the heavy lifting on this one because I am so devastated by this news and i am so afraid to even continue to love this person in this marriage because mm-hmm. he won't be here mm-hmm. yeah because the more you invest the, the more it's going to hurt mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but i think don't you think god is honored by that he's he's almost glad when you throw up your hands and say yeah this has to be all you now mm-hmm. which is kind of where he wants to take us anyway right mm-hmm. exactly that's exactly where he wants us and you know i remember thinking many many times early on after the loss of my first husband you know all i really had was god that's it that's all i had and i really believed and started to internalize and really believe that that was all i needed and that sounds cliche, that sounds really like, you know, coy, but it's really not. That is really what we need. And it's not the God that we've made in the image of he's going to make everything better. But you know what? What he's done for me, I, I prayed for years and years, and I prayed recently at this season, Lord, I'm afraid. Please come and take the fear away. He hasn't taken the fear away. Mm-hmm. You know what he said, though? I am with you in the fear. I want you to keep going in the presence of the fear and the loneliness. So that's what he's asking me to do. How did your friends and family react? That is such a crazy, I mean, there's a couple crazy stories with that. You know, running into people in the grocery store and one person just absolutely losing it and saying, you know, I can't believe this. Poor, I mean, just feeling so sorry for us. Not at all being like, hey, let me know how Mm -hmm. I can come alongside Mm -hmm. you. And then, frankly, there were people that don't want to hear that story because they feel so sorry for me. And, you know, C.S. Lewis says in one of his books, I think it's a grief observed after his wife died, that he felt like he was a death head. Like he felt like when he went into rooms, people would look at him and go, oh, no, we got to talk about this again. I'm really uncomfortable about this. So we have had the most and we've also had really, you know, beautiful responses where it's like, you know what? 
whatever you need, we'll be here for you. How can we help? Yeah. You know, and then those other people that, again, it's that, unfortunately, over-spiritualization, um, and they have not met us where we are. And these are people of the church. These are people that, you know, they haven't had this experience, and they think they're saying helpful things, and they're really not helpful. Yeah, yeah. What do you want them to say? Wow, that's got to be really hard. Mm-hmm. I just want to like let you know that you know I see you, I mm-hmm. hear you. Mm-hmm. I can't fix you. I can't change the situation. And I also, you know, I don't question what God's doing because you are questioning what God's doing, and that's your question for Him. Right. Right. You know, I mean, so many of my friends, you know, think that I have this direct plumb line right to God because I'm a woman of faith and I've had to hang on and all these things. I don't have it any more than you or anyone else has it, you know, but I also do not believe and I cannot allow myself to believe that he's punishing me because I'm still not, I still don't have enough faith, which is some of the things that I hear. Yeah, those are some of the myths that are out there for sure. And I don't know where people get these things, but they... They certainly do blurt them out, mm-hmm. um, and I think there's a fear on on their end of facing it at all, and so they're almost explaining it away while they're talking to you so they don't have to face the reality of it. It's like when something ha- bad happens in America, we have to blame somebody. Mm-hmm. So we immediately start throwing blame mm-hmm. because we just can't accept the fact that the world doesn't work the way we want it to. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. And, and it- our worldview is, you know, as Christians, is sin has broken the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, it's it's once again, and I really mean this sincerely, and it sounds however it's going to sound. It's another opportunity. It's another opportunity for me to surrender my super high capacity ability to lead and to you know own a practice and to have a family and do all the things that, you know, God has equipped me to do. I have to actually surrender all of it and say, you know what, any minute this can all go away. Mm hmm. You know, and the other thing, too, that's really been impressed upon me in this season is, you know, the enemy likes to use time as a weapon. Okay, and so he wants us to live in the past because that's where our failures live, our shame, our regret. And he also likes it when we can live in the future because that's where our uncertainty lives. That's where anxiety lives. Mm -hmm. And what God is saying to me and what I really hope people can hear is God is asking each one of us, I have manna for today. Yeah. Only today. Yeah. You know, we don't know what the treatment is for your husband. We don't know how it's going to show up at the next PET scan. We don't know anything. But what God says is, I have what you need today, so I want your eyes riveted on me today. And that's not easy either. But no, it's not. I train that over my heart, and I continue to, and I will until I'm not here anymore because I need to do that. I need to focus on right now. That's a message for everybody, though. You know, like I, it's my theory that everyone is in trauma in America right now. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably have been since COVID, mm-hmm. um, and everybody wants an answer. Everybody wants to be able to look ahead and see how this is all going to be resolved, mm-hmm. or whatever situation that you're talking about. There's so many of them going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to look at our own lives and say to God, I, I can't really be comforted. You're asking me to be comforted until I know how this is all going to be resolved, how it's all going to work out. How are you going to fix this? Mm-hmm. And the problem is, is that's not our thing. That's his thing. Mm -hmm. And I like what you're saying about um, really looking at the character of God, because that's something that doesn't change. And you can learn those things and you can hold on to those things. There's no promises um, regarding events or health or anything. Mm -hmm. There is a promise regarding the character of God, though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing, too, in this is I believe other than the obvious, you know, the overriding goal is to have all of us be with him in eternity someday, to be with him in heaven. I believe another thing for us that he has down here is to transform us while we're here. And guess what? That transformation is for the benefit of other people. It's not even for us. It is like my story. He is using my story, my unique story, my gifting that he's given me to walk this out for the benefit of somebody else. Right to maybe have someone challenge their own faith or have someone maybe learn something new or maybe unlearn something that is not serving them well. And I want to go back to your point about trauma. You know, we we try to disown that word. We try to milk it down. We try to pretend I haven't had it. We have all had trauma. Yeah. If we could, you know, it's like, 
it's you know it's very similar to the people that refuse to use the word evil. Like, well, there's really not evil in the world. Well, you know what? There is. There kind of is. Yeah. And there and yeah. there is trauma. Yep. And all of us, you know, I can't. I could not get to be the age I'm at right now, and not have suffered trauma. Yeah. None of us can. Right. Right. So, what have you learned about God? He is faithful in every situation. He is there when I can't. I, and again, it's like you know, a takeaway from this program that I really want people to hear is he's there when I can't see him, when it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like he's there when your new husband gets diagnosed with cancer three months after you get married. It didn't look like he was there, right? Right. And he's there when I can't understand his plan. He is there. He has a plan. It doesn't match my plan. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't need to know the plan I always thought I needed to know, like you said, every step and like, all right, because we're high capacity people, because we have a lot of resources, because we're able to, you know, make change and, you know, but here's the thing, you know, our entire society, our entire culture teaches us how to get things, you know, how to get the guy, how to get the girl, how to get the job, how to get the promotion. Our culture doesn't recognize and teach us what do we do when we lose things? Mm -hmm. What do we do when we get that? cancer diagnosis twice in 10 years. What do we do, you know? And my story is one of many, many, many. And I, you know, I walk along devastating stories with people in my practice, you know, as a therapist. And, you know, there's no grief comparison. There's no comparing stories. Yeah. Everyone has their story. Everyone has their season of pain. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, you had three words that you gave me, truth, grace, and time. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I recently just did a talk uh, at a church here in the metro, and I the talk was, I was asked to do the talk on the subject matter, and I thought, oh, interesting. Ended up learning a lot that I apparently God knew that I needed to learn so I could share with others, but it was moving into your purpose now. So moving into your purpose is more about who I'm becoming than where I'm going So again, that transformation piece. Who am I becoming? I'm still here. I wake up in the morning. I've got breath in my lungs. I have something to do. I do have a purpose. So what is my purpose now? What's my purpose when I was a widow for nine years? You know, I was building a practice, raising a family. I kind of knew what my purpose was then. Now it's like, what is my purpose in this new season where I'm trying to prioritize my husband's health over my work and my family and blending all those things? So purpose is grace, truth, and time. And grace is the acceptance piece. Okay, so we need these three elements, grace, truth, and time, in order to move into our purpose. In order to, the first one is acceptance or grace. You know, that is accepting that he is writing my story. He's actually, you know, in control of my story. Yeah. And, you know, the key, le- whoops, the key learning that I learned in this is it's not going to look like the way I wrote it. I'm really not writing the story. He's really writing the story. Right. And he has a purpose, and I don't get to understand what it is. So it's that acceptance piece. And then it's also to steward grace to others. So hopefully something that is being used in my story to give someone else hope, to give someone else direction, or to challenge them in an area in their life. Right. Maybe they're stuck. Maybe they don't know how to move forward. Maybe they need to seek counseling. Maybe they need to you know, mm-hmm. find answers to their situation. But that's the key learning is it's way harder than we thought it was going to be. But he is writing the story, and it reminds me to not lift my problems above the problem solver. You know, I had a a man years ago when my son was in a Christian school, and he was like, I think it was the maintenance guy, and I would see him every once in a while, and he came up to me, and he would always, always ask me. He's kind of like the unlikely person that would, like, ask me how I'm doing and really say, how are you really doing? And Mm -hmm. I'd be like, wow, this guy actually really wants to get in the well with me and find out. And I said, not good at all. I said, actually, I said, you know, I feel abandoned. I feel abandoned by most of the people in this place. I feel abandoned by, you know, God. And he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I want you to remember this. I know it's really hard, but I don't want you to elevate the problems above the problem solver. And I said, would you write that down for me? Yeah, that's a pretty good quote. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. would you text that to me? He texted it to me and literally... I printed it out. It's a little tiny piece of paper, and I still carry that around with me because I need that reminder. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I need that reminder hourly some days. Yeah. Right? Yep. Because sometimes people um, also want to focus on our problems. And, you know, while we're trying to move ahead, um, while we're trying to get to 
I, I don't know if even moving ahead is a good term. Uh, moving forward, you know, there are people that will often remind us um, that, well, yeah, you really shouldn't. Like, I, 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 and they'll do it in a nice way sometimes, but, well, I can't believe that you're, or, or how, how, did, how did you get to, to think that way? Or, and then you start thinking, well, yeah, well, maybe I, you know, like maybe I am doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And and then all of a sudden your focus is off of God and you start to grapple with a problem that only God can solve because ultimately speaking, um, God is the one who's writing our stories. That's very clear scripturally, yes. very clear. Mm-hmm. And, and and here's the other thing I'll say too, and, and uh, then I want to give, give the other two really quickly and then we'll talk about them more next time, but is that we don't also have to be happy about our stories either. <laughs> you know, um, we don't have to walk around going like, oh, you know, I just got a cancer diagnosis. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that no. would be ludicrous. No. No. You know, there, there's, there's a time for mourning, the Bible mm-hmm. says. Mm-hmm. There's time yeah. for sadness. There's yes. a time for all those things. Yes. And so I think dealing with this situation, honestly, is also a step toward um, being authentic and, and real and healing as well. All right. So now you got grace and mm-hmm. truth and time. Mm-hmm. Truth is the reality piece. Truth is, you know, just committing to seeking the truth from God. And it's, it's his word. I mean, there is no other place to go to find the truth of what he says and who he says he is. And in that quest for truth, it I mean, to me, I had to hang on to that because if I'm going to believe what it says in the Bible, and if I'm going to believe biblical hope, because hope is very nebulous, okay, and hope is not an emotion. Hope is a state of being, okay? So biblical hope, what is that? Trusting in God's character, despite what it looks like around you. Yeah. It can look like the wilderness. It can look like I am all alone on the, you know, in the valley. But guess what? We have to trust in the character of God. And that's where I go to the Word to find the truth. The truth, And I need to read a lot about that, yeah. a lot about his character. And I need to impress that upon myself yep. because it doesn't come easy. You know, I need to metabolize that Word. And I also ask the Holy Spirit, like, hey, I need help here reading this because I'm reading this and it's just flat. I don't even know what he's trying to say here. And I need to hang on to something. So I need to have my spiritual eyes open, stay in the Word, and that's how I'm going to have to do it. Yep, yep. And then there's um, time. Time. And time again, it goes back to a little bit earlier what I said, you know, it's focusing on today. It's what does God want me to do today? How does he want me to show up today? And what does he want me to learn today? I've got to stay focused on him because if I don't, then again, I'm running ahead. And I oftentimes do this and I still do this. I run ahead with a plan and I say, oh yeah, Lord, could you please come in and bless that? Because I'm already at the end of that, but I I really would like some blessing thrown on top of that, please. You know, and it's really, it's being like, You know, if we could be really so dependent on him the way he wants us to, I think we would receive so much more peace. There's all the things, and we're human, and that's not going to happen. So that, you know, the time piece is really committing to growing and spending time with the Lord. I think you're doing really well. And so next time we get together, I want to talk about those three words more in depth. Um, How can those listening pray for you right now? Oh, I would say just pray for peace, peace. You know, I normally would say pray that he's healed and great. Pray that he's healed too. We're always yeah, praying for complete sure, healing. Of course. But in the meantime, just peace that we can enjoy one another while we're here and that we're not running ahead and missing out on what God has for us today. Okay. We'll all be praying about that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank Appreciate you so much. Appreciate it very much.